uh, two combinatorial objects, uh, one arising in dynamics and one arising in, uh, I guess, a branch called now geometric Galois theory, which is in some sense uh, perhaps a very naive attempt to understand uh, this group or certain pieces of it in terms of its action as a group of bijections on a certain countable infinite set of trees. Uh, so, I don't know, I'll get started. Uh, in ge geometric Galois theory? Oh, with dynamics? Okay. Um, so, uh, so, I don't know, should I give the talk already? <laughs> no? Okay. Don't let it go. He'll be lying to start. No, I sure. I think Well, I, I, I sort of don't want to do that on purpose. <laughs> Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, ah, that would be that would be a good thing. Okay. Um. Okay. I, I guess this is sort of where sort of where it starts. Uh, um, I guess let uh, X be uh, um, a compact. <laughs> Three month surface. Uh, so, a, a compact three month surface described as a, a zero locus of some polynomial in, in two complex variables. Uh, and it, it admits many such descriptions. Uh, you can, you know, scale its coefficients and so, so forth. And you call such a surface, uh, I guess, um, uh, definable over. Uh, some field if you can take the coefficients of that uh, 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 polynomial to lie in, in that field. So then the theorem is that uh, x is defined uh, over q bar uh, if and only if um, there exists a meromorphic function uh, F from X to uh, P1 uh, ramified only over um, 0, 1, and infinity. So, uh, in other words, um, so let's see if I can, can get this right. This direction is due to Bellie, uh and the other direction I think is due to Vile. Um, 56 or something. Um, and the, the, the proof of this implication is actually fairly elementary. You can do it in a first or maybe a second uh, semester of a course in algebra, modulo, modulo one step. Um, the idea of the proof is. Um, uh, um, sure. Uh, if this, if you have such a function, uh, you can think of P1 with these th three points uh, as being a, a dot, color the upper half plane white and the lower half plane black, say. Uh, and then you can regard those as equilateral triangles. Um, so what this means is that X is defined as a P bar if and only if you can build the conformal structure on X by pasting together finitely many equilateral triangles. Uh, which is kind of a remarkable coincidence of uh, algebra and uh, um, the, uh, the Right, <laughs> that's the theorem. <laughs> um, 
Right. So, um, uh, right. Is it just okay? uh, and, and the idea of the proof isn't too bad. If you think of this thing as sitting inside, um, if you think of this thing as sitting inside uh, um, you know, C for C or P two or something, you can you can project onto one onto one coordinate uh, so that you you, you you then land on on P one uh, and uh, if, if X is defined over Q bar, then the ramification points are where the uh, Jacobian thing uh, vanishes. And so then you have to solve two polynomial equations, but they both have algebraic coefficients. So the images of those points in P1, the critical values of this projection, uh, also have, uh, have al um, or algebraic. Uh, and then there's this remarkable and totally elementary uh, mechanism uh, for taking, uh, for doing the following thing, uh, given a finite set of algebraic numbers in P1, uh, uh, it's finite, so there's there's something of maximum degree, uh, and you can explicitly, uh, by using minimal polynomials, uh, uh, map this set uh, by application of some polynomial P to uh, a, another set of algebraic numbers, um, possibly larger. Uh, but with the property that the number of points which have, al have algebraic degree, say, k, uh, strictly decreases. So even though you, um, you create more points, you have fewer of them of that degree k. Uh, so in the end, you can move everything down to rational points. Um, uh, and so now you have finitely many rational points, and then there's an explicit... Uh, uh, polynomial you can write down, uh, say you can scale so there, say the unit interval takes in the biggest one, m over n, uh, you can then map that set to another set of rational numbers, which is smaller. And in the end, you end up uh, ramified only over 0, 1, infinity. Uh, so, um, and, and, and then by pulling back the uh, uh, triangulation here, um, uh, you get a triangulation of the surface. Uh, I guess it's known that such points are dense in Tychron space. Uh, uh, um, so uh, the Dessau, in, in general, is, is this graph. It's, I guess it would be the, the pre-image. Uh, and I'm finding that there are many different conventions as to what exactly the Dessau is. Um, some people maybe would take the, the whole real axis and call that the Dessau. Some people would take just zero and one, and they mark it with some little arrows, pull that back, and that's the Dessau. And there seem to be a number of different ways of encoding this type of information. Um, I, I, I tried to do this. Uh, I tried to do this for the. Um, uh, I took the uh, rabbit that we saw this morning. Uh, Talk. Huh? No. <laughs> so uh, the duty rabbit is a certain uh, quadratic polynomial with a with a critic z squared plus c, where the critical point of the origin is three and three, so you see here's c squared plus c. And so well, zero c, c squared plus c, those are three algebraic numbers. Those are algebraic numbers, there's four points. So I wanted to apply Bellius theorem in this particular example and actually do the construction. Um, and it can be done. Uh, unfortunately, I think there are something like uh, 10 to the 11th triangles. Uh, um, it doesn't, see, these steps don't seem so bad because you're using minimal polynomials, and so their degree is, you know, bounded by the degree of those things. And those might multiply, those might give you a few. The trouble is the uh, rational numbers that arise get really, really huge. Uh, and the only, you know, the, the explicit mechanism I know for doing this, the degrees involve M uh, and So um, uh, it sounds um, like, you know, in theory, you, you know, you should be able to com compute these things to your heart's content. Um, in practice, I think it's very difficult to uh, to work with these. That's okay. <laughs> so we have 
with Genesis Grandkid, uh, Kevin, to talk about the new sound on the line of trees. Okay. Um, so, uh, I, 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 I guess uh, af after this observation was made by uh, by by Bellie, I think it was uh, Grofendi who realized that um, maybe you can exploit uh, the fact that the Galois group acts on these objects uh, and get some get some mileage out of this towards uh, developing an understanding of this absolute Galois group. Um, so uh, let let me state uh, the theorem. I, I don't know the history of the subject very well, so I'm borrowing uh, what little I know from the, these two blue. Uh, Cambridge Lecture Note uh, volumes ended by Mayor Schnapps. Um, so the, the theorem asserts the, the following, that there is a, a faithful representation of this absolute Galois group uh, to the group of bijections of a certain countable uh, set of planar trees uh, called Dessin. Um, and these Dessin are combinatorial objects which characterize a rigid geometrical objects, in a sense in which I'll describe in just a moment, but you can kind of see how um, this here. Um, on the dynamic side, Hubbard trees are combinatorial objects which characterize rigid dynamical objects. Uh, and the, the basic theorem here that I want to state is that there's also a faithful representation of the absolute Galois group uh, to the group of bijections of a certain catalytic kind of infinite set of Hubbard trees. Um, um, so uh, let, let me let me give a few <laughs> definitions. Um, uh, again, Dessau can be thought of as living on compact Riemann surfaces, but everything also makes sense for cases where the Riemann surface is just P1 again, uh, or if, and we can even make infinity distinguished, and so we can just work with polynomials, uh, which are a little bit easier to think about. Um, so what are plane of tree Dessau? So I need to make some definitions. Uh, a Bellevue polynomial is simply a polynomial with algebraic coefficients uh, with the following property. The, there are only two critical values. And those critical values, uh, the set of finite critical values is the set 0 and 1. Uh, and um, we say the two of these things are isomorphic if they differ by an affine coordinate change in the domain. Um, uh, so, uh, so what's a Dessau? A Dessau is just abstractly a finite planar tree with a bicoloring of vertices, and I've drawn a couple of examples up there. And we say two Dessau are isomorphic if there's an orientation-preserving uh, uh, homeomorphism of the plane to itself, which carries one to the other. So it's just the natural notion of uh, isomorphism for planar trees. Um, so if you have a Bellevue polynomial, then you get a Dessau. Uh, how? You just take f, and you take the pre-image of the segment 0 and 1, which I can just do over there. Uh, and so, so, so here's a particular one. It's 4z to the fourth times 1 minus e to the fourth. Here's 0, here's 1. You take the inverse image of the segment, and you get a finite kind of tree with the bicoloring of vertices. Um, so uh, you get a map from the set of Bellevue polynomials modulo this isomorphism uh, uh, equivalence relation uh, changing coordinates in the domain to uh, Dessau modulo isomorphism. Okay? Um, and uh, many people, since there, there are many uh, notions of what constitute a Dessau, and um, to conform with uh, what I think is standard notation, um, it's it useful to introduce just a, a technical assumption uh, namely this thing of cleanness. And let, let me just skip the, the real definition. Basically, the Dessau is clean if every white vertex is incident to exactly two edges. That translates into meaning that the pre-images of one are exactly simple critical points. Uh, um, and you can always, if you have a value polynomial, you can always make it clean by post-composing it with 4z times 1 minus e. And that, that doesn't change the algebra field of definition of the coefficients or anything. So it's not much of a restriction, and I kind of want to slough over this. Uh, uh, and uh, if, you, if you do that, um, then you get the following theorem, more or less with anybody's definition of Dessau. Namely, that the map which sends a uh, value polynomial to its Dessau gives a bijection, the 
between isomorphism classes of these value polynomials and isomorphism classes of these clean this off. That, that's the, we can talk later. <laughs> they're colored for some people, and some people are color blind. <laughs> Right. <laughs> uh, yes, the disarm. Uh, value polynomial. Uh, BPs. Uh, clean means that uh, the ramification above one is exactly two at every point. So. Uh, uh, Another way to think about this is that the geometry of the Riemann surface obtained by removing the inverse image of the set 0 and 1 it is completely determined by the, by the topology of this tree as a, as a planar tree. Why? Because if you know the tree, you know how to glue together the upper and lower half lines thought of as equilateral triangles, and that determines its conformal structure. Um, so in that sense, a dessin is a combinatorial object which characterizes a rigid uh, uh, geometric object. Um, but some people uh, then forget the colors, uh, and in, and then they need this. Um, so uh, the. Galois group of Q bar over Q, or absolute Galois group, is a mysterious object, and it acts on value polynomials by twisting coefficients. That is, if I have a polynomial F, I write it as A, B, Z to the D, etc., then the action of a, an element sigma in this Galois group uh, is just obtained by applying it to each coefficient. So if we had Z goes to Z bar, we would just complex conjugate every uh, coefficient of this polynomial. And this action descends to an action on isomorphism classes, because uh, if you take uh, f composed by a and twist its coefficients, that's f twisted by sigma composed with a twisted by sigma, because the coefficients of uh, this composition are related to the coefficients of f and a just by polynomials. And sigma is a field polynomialism. Um, so by the growth and d correspondence, you then get an action of this absolute Galois group on a set of trees. And essentially, the same proof as Bellis theorem that I just sketched. Uh, was carried out by uh, Leinster and Schnapps, and they show just explicitly that the action of this group on Dessau is uh, faithful. Um, so in some sense, you can recover gamma if you knew everything there was to know about the Galois theory used of these Dessau. Um, but the orbits are kind of mysterious. So uh, here are two trees, uh, and it turns out that these two are in the same orbit. This one is the same as this one, but these two are in different orbits. Uh, so we would like a mechanism for determining uh, when two trees are in the, are, are in the same Galois orbit or when they're in different ones. We'd like some invariance. I'll discuss that shortly. These are all abstracted as one the Right. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, the, ol the only way that they actually know this is they simply ground through the algebra and discover it. to dynamical systems. Uh, all right, let's now take a polynomial, but let's think of it as a dynamical system. Um, what's the natural version of conjugacy uh, or of, of isomorphism? Since it's dynamics, we should talk about conjugacy, particular conjugacy by an app like that. Um, I'll, and I'll assume throughout now that this, see, if you work in dynamics, you, you realize that understanding what happens to the critical points is crucial. So it's of interest to look at this post-critical set. It's the union of all the forward orbits of the critical points. And I want to assume that that set is finite. So what it means is that uh, any, any critical point must eventually iterate uh, into some periodic orbit. Uh, OK. Uh, 
And it turns out that um, uh, associated to such a polynomial is a finite planar tree. But now this finite planar tree comes equipped with a self-map. Uh, and this pair consisting of the tree and the self-map is, is called the Hubbard tree associated with this uh, uh, polynomial. And the precise definition is rather complicated. And it uh, proceeds by looking very carefully at the structure of this field in Julia Sack and making all kinds of uh, uh, some topological and dynamical arguments to, to show the existence of such a thing. But also, there's a totally abstract definition of one of these things. whose, whose definition is also a, a, a bit long, and so I'm not going to give it here. Um, but uh, the, the theorem, uh, I guess it was Alfredo Poyer that I think hammered through all the details, uh, basically says that in complete generality, uh, once you get the right notion of an abstract Hubbard tree, uh, then the map which sends a polynomial to its Hubbard tree uh, descends to a bijection between conjugacy classes of these polynomials and uh, isomorphism classes of these Hubbard trees. So uh, another way to say that is that all the dynamical and geometric information of this uh, polynomial is a dynamical system is determined just by this hover tree, which is a, a, an emphatically combinatorial object. Can you make a little drawing to show something? Sure. Uh, the hover tree of the rabbit, for example, um, consists of uh, a tree with, I guess, uh, four vertices, uh, one uh, uh, center point here, and then, I, and then there's various other information which gets attached to this. That, that, that's the simplest description. And, what's the map? and the map is rotation by one third of the turn. Um, now this isn't quite right. You actually have to attach a, a fair amount of extra information to this, but this is the germ of the idea. You did the map on No. The 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 the. A healthy hover tree. Uh, okay. If you look in the Mandelbrot set. Yes. Let's see if I can get this right. Uh, uh, Okay. Um, let's see. So here's a tree. I need to I need to make a map of this tree to itself. So let's see. This point is going to go there. This point is going to go there. Uh, this no. This point is going to go there. Uh, this segment maps like. Uh, uh, This one goes there, this one goes there, this one goes here. I actually wanted to see if something like a plot, some performance of that one. Well, let's see, it's, I mean, it's. Uh, it's supposed to be a skeleton, it's a lot better than it. So you feel something rolling, stretching, rolling. Right, okay, so this, so this piece is rotated by 100, let's see is uh, flipped like this and then stretched across the whole interval. Uh, this piece here maps in a one-to-one -one fashion to this, this angle. Draw the image on top of the domain. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, It's actually a little bit more involved in that. Uh, to recover the, you know, what you really need is the fact that this map extends to a neighborhood of it in the plane. And so you can extend it to the sphere and invoke um, Thurston's characterization. And so in, in order to do that, you know, there, there are certain maps for which this data is not quite enough. So you have to really attach all kinds of other things. Basically, you take maybe well, one or two more levels of inverse images, and then you define this. Um, okay.
Uh, so um, now I'd like to explicitly connect these uh, decile and, and hover trees. Uh, so what I'm going to do is turn belly polynomials, for which there's no dynamics, because we can change coordinates in the domain, but we don't change coordinates in the range, uh, into a dynamical system by re-identifying the domain and range. And I'm simply going to do that by requiring now that the post-critical set uh, is equal to the set 0 and 1. Uh, so every, uh, uh, every, in particular, the set of critical values is the set 0 and 1, and that set 0 and 1 maps then into itself. Uh, so the, the picture, um, here's a bunch of critical points. Uh, they map to, say, to 0. Uh, here's another bunch of critical points. Uh, they might map to 1. Uh, and then this set, 0 and 1, is taken into itself. Uh, so that's the schematic. Um, and then the theorem is that the uh, absolute Galois group also acts faithfully on this set uh, of polynomials, and hence by the correspondence between hover trees and polynomials, it acts faithfully on hover trees as well. And that's not very interesting because it's, it's sort of clear if you take one of these dynamical belly polynomials and simply forget the fact that it's a dynamical system, you get a belly polynomial. So there's a sort of forgetful functor from dynamical belly polynomials to belly polynomials. It's equivariant with respect to the group actions, uh, and it's onto <laughs> PVD. Uh, but a little bit more interesting is that uh, these two trees really have something to do with one another, namely, to recover the hover tree from the Dassault, uh, all you do is this. You, uh, so a, a hover tree is exactly a Dassault together with an ordered pair of distinct vertices uh, for, this, uh, for this class of maps. Um, and you can make this statement sort of natural uh, as well. Uh, OK. But the one thing that's present in dynamics that isn't present in other places is the fact that we can, we can iterate things. Uh, and um, for belly polynomials by themselves, that doesn't make sense because of this coordinate change. Uh, and um, also, if I iterate uh, one of my dynamical belly polynomials, I might lose this cleanness condition, which is so sought after by the experts. Um, but it turns out that if you add one extra bit of normalization, uh, uh, namely, you require that uh, um, 0 maps to 0 by local degree 1, and 1 maps to 0 by local degree 1, we still have clean, so all of these degrees are local degree 2, um, then that set is closed under composition. Uh, and in particular, it's closed under iteration. Um, so. Uh, I can do dynamics on this. So now I can bring to bear all of the uh, uh, algebraic uh, dynamical objects, like the, uh, periodic points or derivatives along periodic points and so forth. Um, uh, no, it's extra clean dynamical value polynomial. We could have them called them immaculate, but I don't know. I had to come up with something, and I wanted to compare with these. Um, so this, this set is closed under composition, and the Galois group still acts faithfully there as well, um, as good as you show. Uh, so um, here's something that I don't understand. There are a lot, there's a lot of things that I don't understand, but um, um, here's one of them that I, I guess I really, really don't understand. Um, namely that uh, if you take one of these extra clean dynamical belly polynomials and take its second iterate, and then forget dynamics, uh, you just, just record its class is a value polynomial. That map is, um, is uh, injective. Um, see, one of the advantages of using this set XDVP is that it's an actual set. There's no set modulo isomorphism or anything. No two maps in here are conjugate, none of them are homomorphisms. Um, when I do this, you might think that I, I, I wind up identifying something, but it, it turns out that you don't. So the whole dynamical theory of this Gallagher factor embeds into the usual one. Um, uh, curiously, the, the, the proof I have of this theorem um, invokes facts from complex dynamics. Perhaps it's not necessary, but, uh, but it does, which is kind of interesting. Could you say what sorts of facts? Uh, the fact that these uh, maps have no parabolic cycles, or parabolic fixed points in particular. Um, so uh, another way to say this is that this dynamical system determined by f is completely determined by the uh, class of f, f iterated twice. Uh, as a covering space, uh, where the domain and range aren't identified. Um, so the Hausdorff dimension of its Julia set is determined by some subgroup of index d squared on the free group on two generators, uh, which is kind of weird, I think. Um, 
And again, so letting this Galois group act on the set of dynamic Lebesgue polynomials, it gives essentially the same theory as letting it act in the cell. Whether that's useful for anything, I don't know. Um, but uh, if we turn to trying to distinguish um, Galois orbits, then it's at least conceivable we might get some new information as follows. So what are some invariants we have of, of the orbits? Well, the number of edges in the Poisson, that is the degree, is obviously an invariant. Um, also, the set, unordered set of uh, valences, uh, these, these collections of local degrees, uh, is also an invariant. Um, and much more subtly, the, the monodromy group action uh, up to isomorphism as a isomorphism of group actions is also an invariant. So what do I mean by that? Well, uh, here's a Dasson for a certain uh, degree 8 map, F. Uh, the monodromy group action is an action of uh, um, the, uh, you can think of it this way, uh, take a loop sigma uh, zero um, and loop sigma one, those uh, act on the fiber of, say, this base point. Uh, so sigma one is a fixed point free uh, involution uh, inside S8 and sigma zero uh, fixes uh, these four and then permutes these four cyclically. So in this case, the monodromy group action is a uh, a certain subgroup of S8 on, on eight symbols. Uh, and that turns out that's an invariant of the Galois action. Um, that invariant does not distinguish between those two orbits that I had up before. So it's known not to be a complete invariant. Um, but in, in, in the dynamical setting now, if I have G Galois conjugate to F, then the iterates of G are Galois conjugate to the iterates of F. And uh, hence, uh, the monodromy group actions of all these iterates are also um, uh, isomorphic. Uh, so I have now like a whole tower of invariants as opposed to just one. Okay. Do you and I have the monodromy group action? I'm sorry? Oh, just the monodromy in the sense of... Uh, like as a covering space, yeah. yeah. Uh, in this sense. Yeah. Um, and I have at least one example where uh, two maps are uh, uh, not Galois conjugate, their Dessar are the same, but the Dessar of S squared can be distinguished by looking at this. Uh, uh, but their monodromy group actions and their second iterates are not the same. Uh, and therefore, they're not Galois conjugate. Um, so, uh, um, I don't know, I just want to ask, I've been asking this question for a while and nobody's even commented on it. Uh, how, fi how fine an invariant is, could this be? Uh, in fact, you can write down explicit recursive formula for these two generators as they depend on the number of iterates n. So you make them concrete, you can program them into Maple, you can compute their orders. They grow rather rapidly. Uh, um, uh, so there's a lot of it, you know, explicit information you can get, although it is fairly large, and uh, the question is, can this be used for anything?